very much Netty and welcome everybody delighted to have so many joined today live and uh, we will be recording actually so um, if uh, others want to catch up afterwards or you want to review again um, that will be possible as well a um, few bits of housekeeping just before we get started so we don't think we will need the whole hour but it does depend on the number of questions um, if you do want to ask a question there is now a new we've just noticed a QA and a um, function in the team's um, toolbar so uh, if you could place questions in there um, and but if you do want to uh, have your question answered throughout then by all means um, just let us know and we'll I'll try and address it at that point in time um, otherwise we'll wait till the end and we'll uh, do the Q&A at the end so either or it's entirely up to you um, but you will be on mute um, for the whole session and uh, we as I say we will be recording as well um, and any questions so again that's a slight change so any questions please post in the new Q&A part of the uh, toolbar and that that should help us keep track and Nettie will be keeping track who's my colleague just um, who was just doing the introduction and then we will be um, coming to that at the end as I say okay so this is the um, flow of the agenda today so I'm going to give a quick introduction to Bioforum because some people on the call may or may not know Bioforum um, to a greater or lesser extent. So I think it's going to be a really good opportunity just to give a quick overview of Bioforum, who we are, what we do and um, who our members are and what we um, collectively do for the biopharmaceutical manufacturing industry. Um, I'm then going to go into some of the work that we've been doing over the last few years, actually, um, in terms of regulatory at Bioforum and how that delivers value. Um, and that is specifically work that has been supporting um, all of the forums within Bioforum. So we have 10 uh, forums currently with the new one launching imminently in April, which is the new regulatory CMC forum. Um, and that regulatory group has been uh, made up of SMEs who have been supporting and helping and advising um, on the adoption of um, innovation and new methodologies, for example, um, whether that be in manufacturing or other parts of the value chain of, of, of an organisation. So we've had this very strong capability, uh, very well respected and, and with, with great outputs um, across via forum supported by that regulatory group um, but what we now have is this uh, new opportunity for regulatory CMC leaders to come together and work on the topics on the vision from that's taking regulatory CMC from divergence <coughs> to convergence um, and that is super critical um, right at this moment in time um, for, for regulatory CMC to, to work more effectively and to basically enable better patient outcomes. So that, that's, that's something I'm going to cover from the forum perspective. And then what we can also look at is um, how you could help us to drive that transformation of CMC or some of your colleagues. Um, that would be uh, fantastic to have more people join us on this journey and really help us to um, collaborate and really bring together the best minds to work on this so that we can then um, look at the future and say, what is it that needs to be done to enable this this move from divergence to convergence. So just some quick overview stats around Bioforum. So with the new regulatory CMC forum launching in April, we will have 11 forums um, and there is over these. These forums are currently working on over 100 industry changing initiatives. So you know, Bioforum is a place for collaboration, innovation and um, achieving actionable uh, change as well and effecting that within um, your own member organisations. So really we take things from ideas, concepts all the way through to um, implementation in, in organisations and that means that uh, members realise the value, recognise the value of participating in the forums because there they get to pull their resources, their, 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 all of their skill sets and come up with solutions that, that work for everybody and actually that's a very effective way of, of um, you know, managing projects and managing uh, goals and, and, and managing your uh, priorities within your own organisations and the regulatory forum, regulatory CMC forum is no different, that's exactly the uh, model that we will be taking. Um, there's over 150 member companies and we have over seven and a half thousand um, SMEs member uh, participants ranging from very senior um, you know, C-suite all the way down to, well, all the way down, sorry, <laughs> that's a terrible phrase, C-suite to uh, people who are more involved in the technical specialities that they, you know, they're real technical experts in their areas and they 
they bring their expertise to the uh, the work streams that we have and of course different participation levels depending on the need of um, the the actual project or the work stream um, or whether it's really looking at more the the strategic direction as well so we have engagement across all of the um, uh, you know all across the organizations of our members um, and what that does is it helps our member organizations to affect change as well because they have sponsorship and they have the expertise involved um, in the solutions which is um, of course an ideal scenario when when you're looking to affect change in your own organizations and really what we look at is having one voice for industry, so one single voice, and that is the power of working with Bioforum as well, is that it's really a unique global collaboration uh, place. It, it, you know, we have a, a vehicle for innovation and change, and it's bringing together industry leaders and experts like yourselves that really, you know, superpowers that, that change and that innovation. Um, and what we do have as well is, again, from a, by a foreign perspective is quite unique in terms of having both the technical um, expertise but also then the regulatory support that enables that to happen so really it's a very powerful combination and, and that's something we're looking to build on we're investing in regulatory as a as a uh, you know capability at bioforum um, recognizing the criticality of regulatory for every organization and and all of the work that gets done um, and so it, it's really by pooling that knowledge and the expertise and experience that, that that delivers the results of working within Bioforum. So the mission is really, again, quite simple. It's to create this, this environment where the industry can collaborate for the benefit of everybody. And, and we include in that actually patients because ultimately regulatory work, regulatory CMC work is about getting drugs, products to markets safely and with quality and efficacy and really making sure that patient access and patient safety is paramount in all of that. So at the end of the day, that's what we're looking to achieve. And everybody at Bioforum, all the members, all of the experts, all of the sponsors, they all play a part in that mission. Um, and that's, again, you know, the, the power of working with it within Bioforum. Um, so we bring leaders together. Um, we mobilize the communities um, and across the value chain as well. Um, and again, we create these partnerships that enable change. And by working together, we can we can move faster. Um, and it's really replacing individual silos and isolation with collaboration. And again, it's very, very powerful to bring together different companies and different organizations and different experiences um, and, and bring that all together and really look at how the solution can be crafted from there. So it's really about accelerating the path of innovation and adoption um, is, is our mission in, in all of this. And then for membership, um, it comes, so there's an individual benefit to the people working um, who make new networks, new contacts, and of course get exposed to new ideas, new thinking, new new ways of working, um, new experience. Uh, business gets that, you know, the shared experience and knowledge and, and the benefit of that as well. And then we have the industry benefit as well. So clearly working within the environment, the external environment is also something that's super critical to success. And that is also something that we are um, actively working on and working with regulators and stakeholders to ensure the best outcomes so that when um, something is you know when, when when a group wants to innovate in ma in a manufacturing process then they have the regulatory support advice and then also engagement with the external regulators to be able to get that you know engaged endorsed and adopted um, you know where that where that is um, possible so so that's really how we work and what we're working on and that's across bioforum but also specifically the regulatory cmc forum will be focusing on that regulatory environment um, as a super critical piece of our work as well uh, and i'll come on to that shortly so we're, we're basically focused on biopharmaceuticals we do have actually um, a new forum which is all about medical technology so if that is a, a, a relevant obviously has as much need as the biopharmaceutical industry to 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 collaborate and to work on these kind of topics um, so we have global reach um, and we're therefore influential and the the sponsorship enables us to be strategic and to get the buy-in and the you know the the implementation within the member organizations um, and then also having that industry-wide expertise and experience uh, those seven and a half thousand people 
um, bringing their their brain power to everything we do is 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 incredibly powerful. Um, and then we've got results and expert facilitation. So obviously, one of the things that we try to avoid very much is to have a uh, solution, but one that really doesn't gain traction and isn't implemented. So I think that's the point: is that by a forum is about being, you know, taking those practical steps to how do we then realise the value once we've identified the challenges, the pain points, what needs to be, um, you know, have some innovation or have a, have, a, have a fix or have something developed to address those challenges and pain points. Well, how do we make that reality? And that's also applies to the regulatory CMC forum as well. Um, and then in terms of our what we do, we bring this expert facilitation, which means that there is this safe, and compliance space for everybody to work in um, and that protects everybody from um, you know any any potential areas of concern and that means that you know from a from a business perspective you can realize the benefits but there's these guardrails that really keep everything in check and our facilitators um, and our teams um, enable that that very well and they also are very skilled at obviously identifying the challenges and pain points and then leading the team towards um, you know defining the goals the aspirations the ambitions what they would like to define as outputs and deliverables and then delivering <laughs> um, and again when it comes to the own or your own organizations it, it, it is, is a bit more up to the, the member organizations but certainly you know you will get significantly far along the journey um, on that you know using the model that we have um, in place at Bioforum. So just a couple of quick slides. You will know, you will recognise, um, you know, a lot of the companies here, and we, we are lucky enough to have some of the top biopharma manufacturers around the globe um, participating. Um, and there are a lot more than than there are on this slide, but these are some of them. Um, and we also have, though, critically, the key industry supply partners as well. So it's a really great combination of um, the value chain and really making sure that we include all the voices and where partners are partnering already, um, it then helps to um, have them, those, those companies um, assisting with the, the solution, creating the solution and crafting the solutions. So um, next, section is really about regulatory at Bioforum and as I was mentioning we have a fantastic group of regulatory SMEs made up of member um, organisations and led by Isabel Lecker um, who used to work at GSK is a regulatory expert SME um, in her own right and Isabel leads that that group to deliver um, the support and advice that the technical work streams require to be able to achieve their deliverables and outcomes because again if you're wanting to um, engage uh, in new methodologies and anything that, that requires a change in the regulator's viewpoint or position or even the regulation itself clearly that's going to need uh, regulatory support and advice and that's what Isabel's team has been doing for a few years now um, and will continue to do and that that's that is also um, a super critical piece of what we how we deliver value um, so so basically I just want to give you an example of what um, Bioforum have been doing just from a very high level. And again, there's lots more resources on the website, so I'm not going to um, go into too much detail. But if you are interested and you would like to know more, you can reach out to me or you can have a look on the website because some of the uh, deliverables and some of the outputs have just been so um, impactful and impactful for industry um, and impactful for our members as well, working in those technical work streams. So. One thing we do know is that, and, and this will not be news to anybody on this call, is that from a life cycle management perspective um, and CMC and biomanufacturing in particular is very complex. So the products are complex, there's complex raw materials, uh, there's complex manufacturing processes, there is complex controls. And there's two ways of approaching that complexity, um, which is to have very tight controls or a mature quality approach um, or a combination. So I think um, the historic approach for these life saving medicines has been the tight control um, and doing, you know, do the same thing every time. And that ensures the control of the product quality. However, <laughs> as you can probably imagine, that doesn't necessarily um, help when you have something that you want to change or have innovation. So when those tight controls need to be evolved, uh, that's where we come in. So 
Essentially, um, we are able to collect industry-wide product and process knowledge and understanding for Biologic CMC, and to date that has involved changes to cell banks, uh, raw materials and manufacturing processes. And again, Isabel's team has been absolutely um, core and critical to supporting these changes, to get these changes um, you know, uh, considered by the regulatory bodies and the standards agencies, and then to look at how these can be implemented in real terms um, so that these great innovations, these great ideas, these new technologies can be adopted uh, successfully and again for the benefit of all. So that's really about translating the innovation and the, the ideas that come out of the forums into best practices for life cycle management. Um, as I say, um, we're working on over 100 initiatives, um, ma mainly with a technical focus. And that is the point, I guess, is that, again, we're, we're supporting that with Isabel's uh, RegEx group, the, the group that provides the regulatory support and advisory. Um, and that's just to make sure that we don't miss anything and that the regulators are engaged nice and early and we get that position and we get that, that consensus and we get the the ability to effectively um, advocate and influence for that change within the regulatory ecosystem. And again, that can take a long time or it can be a quick thing. It's generally going to take a lot, a bit longer, depends on the scale of the change. Um, and so it's great to engage and have this resource in-house so that we basically combine technical expertise with the regulatory expertise. And that's the model today um, and really, really, really helps, um, as I say, to take the ideas take what the ambition is and make that into a reality. So as I say, there's a couple of examples here, um, which are the uh, consensual output um, from a couple of the work streams that were supported by the RegEx uh, group. Um, and one of those was around working cell banks and a change to that. Um, and then also around raw materials as well. And there are others, many, many, many more examples. Um, we do have these available on our website and they are free of charge um, to the, the public domain. So you don't have to be a member yet of Bioforum to access these materials. Um, they, are, they are published by industry for industry, actually, as part of the Bioforum model. Um, there are some materials that sit um, behind our firewall that are forum member only, but they are that there are there are many, many, many um, free resources for you to, to look at if you wanted to have an example of the um, information that is uh, produced and the outputs and deliverables that are produced by, uh, by a forum regulatory experts um, and the technical experts working together. So I've talked about um, the, the, the kind of the background to regulatory at Bioforum and, and what we've done to date. And essentially what has come from that group is the desire and need to work on regulatory topics and drive their own agenda. Because actually, from what I've explained, you'll understand that the work of the RegEx group, the regulatory support group, has been predominantly driven by the needs of the technical forums. So whether that be in manufacturing processes, new methodologies, comparability, for example, those are all um, really you know, projects and work streams that have been driven by the needs of those forums um, and the, the technical experts really that, that work in those forums. What we're doing now is creating a place that is regulatory CMC for regulatory CMC. And that's because there is a big piece of work to be done um, to take CMC from divergence to convergence. And I use this slide to really anchor um, the, the why of the forum and, and the work that the forum will be doing. Um, and really to explain why it's so critical right now and why it's going to bring so many benefits and, and everything that um, I'm sure people on this call are very familiar with. Um, one thing I have experienced over the last few months is talking to all of the regulatory experts and, and customers and, and, and you know, voice of customer um, activity that we've been doing to learn about what people would like to work on has really, really brought has has really brought together the fact that there is a lot of work to do, but people are very keen to get working on it because there's a lot of you know a lot of there's a lot of opportunity in this this model, and yet there is a lot of still um, you know confusion and uh, inefficiency ineffectiveness in this model too, and that's what we want to we want to break down those um, you know that that those kind of walls if you like and and start to make change from the divergent state today over to convergence in the top right. So the, the statement is the quality of the product does not or should not depend on where the patient is, 
and yet the regulatory ecosystem does not reflect that today and the burden on regulatory and CMC is just increasing all the time uh, despite global harmonization efforts uh, there still is a huge amount of extra work that, that regulatory are being asked to do um, and uh, in a way that really um, is kind of creaking at the seams slightly because sometimes the ways of working don't help with the consistency, efficiency, effectiveness of the workload of regulatory experts. So there is, there is a big piece of work to be done in terms of, as I say, from divergence over to convergence um, and lots of interesting stuff that we can start to work on. So what this slide shows is uh, basically the sequence of events so far in terms of the um, defining what the topics of interest would be for the group, the forum, the new regulatory CMC forum to work on and also looking at where would they like to get started as well and some of the other implications. So I'm just going to run through these quite quickly. So we had a sequence of um, workshops, facilitated workshops, and they were with our some of our members um, who are already familiar with Bioforum and working with us, but we've recently had more come in and join us um, really to try and help develop the programme and give their thoughts into what should we be working on and why and how, what are the challenges and pain points and what are some of the ideas of what we could do to improve these um, and really kind of condense that down then into a, a really you know focused piece of work. So what we started with was just identifying the high level, the key topics and those those things that really were on people's minds and what they thought were the big buckets of um, work that, that really needed addressing to drive that vision from, from divergence to convergence again. So on the 23rd of September, there was one workshop which basically looked at all of the topics and brainstormed all of the topics and then prioritised. And it was very clear from that workshop that there were three um, overriding, overarching themes, uh, priorities that the group would like to focus on. And again, if you think back to the previous slide, these are really supporting and driving that that vision um, and but coming from slightly different angles. So first of all, we've got filing and review, which is about how do we ensure decreased submission timelines and pushbacks and what does that look like? Um, and then also priority two, looking at interactions with health authorities and then also influencing the regulatory environment, because that is clearly part of the um, you know, part of the process in terms of making sure that effective change happens is bringing all viewpoints together um, in, in, you know, in, in one place so that we can then effectively work together and have change. Um, and again, from a Bioforum perspective, um, we have a new head of external regulatory partnerships who's ex-MHRA UK, so the regulator in the UK, and she brings with her her wealth of experience working for the regulator, um, but also the Department of Health in the UK, so the government of the U, central government of the UK, and we are working together to look at how we can engage more closely with regulators to essentially get their viewpoint, get their point of view into the room and do that in a way that will enable us to straddle that firewall that exists between industry and regulators for the right reasons, but isn't particularly helpful when you want to uh, collaborate and you know make a success of um, the, the change that's needed within the ecosystem to drive forward um, you know, that vision. So ultimately, the, everyone in that ecosystem wants the same thing, but it's it's how do we work together in the best way to get the best outcomes. And that's what we're working on as well in terms of that overall influencing um, the, the regulatory environment. And then of course there's uh, harmonization. So really great example of when uh, you know African nations were able to um, basically rely on the EMA's approval of the COVID vaccine to approve it themselves as a proxy for their own scientific assessment and they did that because they could see that you know we can rely on the EMA's own assessment of this and therefore we are going to go with this because we need to do it quickly so it was almost done within I, I think it was within hours of the EMA announcing their approval then there were some markets that followed you know very very rapidly so that showed that there could be ways of working that could affect these changes but what some what has happened since obviously is that um, we're not in COVID situation anymore, thank goodness. We we don't have that that kind of uh, absolute um, critical need to get approvals through as quickly as possible. So therefore, I guess things have gone back to a bit more of business as usual. And what the group have said is we'd like to continue 
working in that similar way you know because it can be done and how do we get how do we improve this situation so that we have internally one dossier which is a big piece of work in its own right and then ultimately externally um, you know have this one standard one approval and of course there are lots of strands to that and um, that that is including the regulatory work itself um, but also looking at and considering you know things like capabilities like regulatory intelligence um, information knowledge management content management structured content authoring intelligent authoring so labeling is a really good example um, I don't know if anyone has had any projects with labeling but but it's certainly a great place to start in terms of um, looking at how to manage content um, and information uh, in a more efficient way. And certainly I know a lot of companies are looking at that as a, as a starting point. So this is just to say thank you to everyone who has um, helped us so far in the journey to develop the programme. So these are some of the companies that have been actively engaged with us throughout the process to help us define the programme, to help us develop the uh, the, the challenges and, the, and then some of the potential solutions and now we're uh, looking at how we can narrow that down into a program of work so that we can get started on some of these key critical items um, that are really going to help drive that vision forward and again these are some of the companies but we'd love to have more um, join us uh, from and, and, and even before April obviously April is when we're aiming to start so if I just go to the next slide um, we are aiming to start on the 21st of April um, just after Easter. So that will be the kickoff meeting of the new forum, the new CMC forum. And the first piece of work that's been identified is uh, ICH N4Q, which is about developing an, a consensus statement and position for the review of ICH N4Q. And again, that's an externally driven timeline. So what we are planning to do is to have the group bring together an industry consensus opinion and feedback input for the expert working group um, for that review ahead of when they publish their, their public consultation document so that we can get that in front of them so they can consider it within their, 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 um, their, their draft of, of that, that, that first draft of the public um, document. And that has a timeline. So between April and um, summer break, <laughs> July, um, we're gonna get that in front of them and then they can consider it and then they'll come back in the fall, I guess. Um, but hopefully that should then give us the engagement um, into the committee. Um, but we're also looking at other um, bodies as well that are also working on this as well so that we can really bring together everybody in this ecosystem to get the best result for this for this review because it does it does have such a big impact on on um, the the challenges that people face in terms of their submissions um, for the for the CTD so there's, there's a great piece of work there great opportunity to bring together and collaborate on on that piece of work um, the second big theme that's that's really come out of this and this goes back to that structured content and regulatory intelligence piece as well um, is about the transformation of regulatory so I've been speaking with some of the senior leaders um, not necessarily strictly in regulatory CMC but they may be work they're going to be they're working in regulatory and they're working in areas where their focus is on how to enable better ways of working through investment in better technology data and content capabilities and um, that's a big topic in its own right and has been done in other parts of the value chain of organizations but we're now at a point where innovation and transformation and investment in these solutions is really being driven by um, you know, the needs of regulatory which hasn't happened so much before so it's a really exciting time to be working on this stuff um, and, but it does sit separately to obviously the regulatory expertise that we need to look at M4Q um, transformation of regulatory is really about how do we enable better ways of working, more consistency, more compliance, more better quality through having the right knowledge management and flows throughout the business. Um, and again, that, that's something that we're going to be discussing with a group of senior sponsors um, in May 2023. That's the plan. So just in summary, um, these are some of the um, basically the, the, the kind of benefits of working within the regulatory CMC forum and also true for, for Bioforum in general. But co compliance and quality um, is something that we're looking to improve. And again, that's through intelligence of changes and also end to end compliance, um, looking at how that can be best managed throughout the organisation 
um, and working across silos and looking at the business processes that drive that. So compliance and quality um, is something that we're, we're looking at. Um, and then obviously speed. So it's about enabling regulatory to do their work in a more efficient way, in a better way, um, and get the best, get best, best outcomes for everybody so that there's no delays in getting patients their new therapies and new drugs and new treatments because, I don't know, something changed in the environment and um, that wasn't maybe captured um, in time. And, and that happens on a daily basis because of the sheer volume and work and information um, that is coming towards each organisation that they have to comply with. Um, so, so that's something that we really want to focus on. And then from a cost perspective, it's about enabling that that planned time to market so that, that people can, again, get those treatments to in their markets at the right time. Um, and then also looking to reduce non value adding activities that are highly transactional um, and don't necessarily add much value, but still need to be done. Um, so really the, the admin tasks of, of the regulatory work as well. Um, and again, we're reducing risk in that model by so so the way we reduce risk is by engaging um early and collaborating well with the regulatory environment the the whole ecosystem um and that includes the regulators and um you know that that that's something super critical that we're, we're very um aware of and, and really working on actively as we speak um we're looking to do a proof of concept with the mhra um working in a sandbox uh type um scenario and really looking at how we can get their feedback on a regulatory change that we want to have endorsed um, that the group are, you know, the group know it's, it's something that, that will really benefit everybody, but it's really then how do we get the regulator view? And that's something that we're going to work on with the MHRA. So there's um, watch this space and we will have more news on that as, the, as that happens. Um, and then from an innovation perspective, it really is just about really, you know, transforming and, and innovating in that ecosystem to enable better patient access. So I think my final slide is just um, just to say, you know, we'd love you to come and be part of the journey. Um, help us to lead and drive that innovation in regulatory CMC. Um, these are my details, excuse me. <coughs> and uh, I'd be delighted to speak to anybody at any time if you want to just reach out. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn if you want to reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, but I will pause there and just see if there's any questions, uh, Q&A that we can come to.